house of the Lord.
dearly. Um, Jean Pratt, I got a text from uh, uh, Lisa. Her, uh, is that her name? Yeah. Um, from uh, about Jean is that uh, she uh, fell a while back and fractured her hip. And uh, she hasn't been able uh, to get on her feet to walk at all. And uh, Dale, uh, her son, believes that she's had a stroke also because it's being there, it's difficult to communicate with her. And so uh, Lisa was afraid that um, she may be uh, getting ready to go uh, into the next realm for graduation into Jesus. So we want to pray for her. We want God's will to be done with her. Uh, we don't want her to suffer. So if God's not going to heal her and make her well again, we don't want her to have a long, drawn-out sickness either. So uh, uh, we, we know uh, that Jean loves the Lord with all her heart, has been used of the Lord for so many years, her and Papa Pratt, her husband. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's just something that I really want everyone to be aware of so you can be ministering to her and to the family. She's been the matriarch of that family for a long time. I don't know. Do you know how old Jean is? She's got to be close to 90 something. Yeah, got to be close to 90. So uh, let's remember her this morning. Also, um, uh, Ron uh, Panter had been in the hospital and uh, uh, getting uh, something calibrated, I believe, in his heart. And uh, so uh, he's back home now. Uh, uh, but Mavis said that uh, she thought maybe she'd have to go to the hospital herself because she isn't doing well. So let's remember our friends there uh, in Minnesota. Uh, they are so precious. Has uh, They've been faithful uh, to make our meetings. Mavis has played for us for so many years on the piano, and uh, we just want to minister to them. Amen. that they can be revived, that they can be healed and restored. Amen. So I want everyone uh, to be ministering to them during this service and to Gene Pratt also. Uh, who Does anybody else know of a prayer? I've a couple. Uh, my younger brother, uh, they found a blood clot on his brain, and they basically said it's too dangerous to operate, and they sent him home to die. And uh, he's been in and out, got a text early, early this morning. Mm. And the strokes are getting closer together, and you don't have much longer, they say. And uh, you remember Howard and Pat McDaniel? Yes. Uh, Howard, I got a text from Connie this morning that uh, uh, Howard is in congestive heart failure, and he's having extreme difficulty breathing right now. Wow. Uh, so they ask for prayer or the Lord's perfect will in that. Yes, they've been very faithful over the years and hungry for God and His truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing healing wings to all of these that need to touch. Any of you in, uh, that are viewing this on a video, uh, we want to this word to go to you also. They're going through many physical uh, uh, ailments and this bug that is going around where it's so congestive uh, Pauletta is still suffering from it, so we want to remember her also. We missed Pauletta last week, not being here. Gary tried to sound like her, but he just couldn't. He just couldn't.
just a few words. He's a healing Jesus. Yes, we need that. Healing Jesus.
Stephen when he was being stoned and he cried out and he said I see Jesus standing not sitting standing at the right hand of God oh hallelujah don't you just love Jesus he knows us he knows our, our troubles he knows our afflictions he knows it all and he's helping us today. Hallelujah. Something uh, starts within us and works its way out into our soul and our body. Hallelujah. Bringing perfect alignment in this man that we are. The whole man being brought into the light and the glory of our risen Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, sing it.
I see Jesus in you. If I can't see Jesus in you, I can't see him anywhere else. I see him in his temple where he resides. Amen. And I love it when I see the Lord raise up in each and every one. And to see new life being manifested. Hallelujah. To hear the voices of praise, adoration unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It thrills me. Hallelujah. I love his appearing in every son. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter if you agree with doctrine. You're a son. Hallelujah. And I rejoice in his appearing in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So so let him arise this morning. Let him rise up and do his great mysterious works in you and through you into others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this is that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it is his day. you're here. Amen. We're not asking you to come into our hearts. You're already in our heart. Hallelujah. Resident, reigning king, glory. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Jesus, that we can touch you with our infirmities and that you are moved by them. Hallelujah. That you're not standoffish or exalted above our afflictions, 
but that they move you, Lord, with compassion. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we thank you for your love, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. are being gathered into that place together. Hallelujah. Amen. Together to rejoice in the Lord. Oh, there's an innumerable, innumerable company with us today. Hallelujah. Innumerable. You can't, you couldn't have ever have a computer big enough or strong enough or intelligent enough to, to number the host that is in our midst, hallelujah. And that place is in Jesus. It's in him. And we have fellowship there, don't we? Communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. When we eat of his body and drink of his blood, hallelujah. When we break bread with one another because it is the body of Christ that we are eating today. Hallelujah. And the blood, the life of our Father, Zoe life, hallelujah, is being given unto us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, it's just so astounding and beyond my ability. To... Sometimes you feel like you're just talking crazy. And according to the uh, sanity of this world, we are talking crazy. Because we, we don't want to speak as a man would speak. We want to speak as the oracles of God with a creative word that sets things in order. Oh, glory. Arranges all the 
heaven and the earth and, the, and, and our body, spirit, and so all the different parts brings them together. Hallelujah. Don't you love them? I will drink of your cup, number 157. I will drink of your cup. I will taste of your pain. I will walk in your Priesthood's me. I'm 
something in the midst of us this morning. Hallelujah. And I believe that we're getting uh, it free to move amongst us, even with our doubts and our fears. We're still going to call upon the name of the Lord and to cause him to be exalted in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory. Raise it up. What is that? C?
Mr. Jesus into you today. Lord, we're ministering to Phyllis. She's got pneumonia. We know everyone loves Phyllis. Bless her heart. So may this healing in this room become the healing for Phyllis. And raise her up quickly out of this, Lord. Dry up her phlegm and her congestion. Hallelujah. Let her breathe. Hallelujah. Breathe, Phyllis. Breathe in the name of the Lord. Breathe in the Lord and be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In his holy name. Glory to God. you love them? Amen. Do you feel it? I feel it. I know we can't go by feelings, but I feel it. And I know that God is going to do whatever his word says. He is going to accomplish everything. And I know theoretically it is finished in Jesus. But that's not the end of the great salvation of God. He won't quit until every son has the glory of God. The same glory that was in Jesus is going to be seen in every son. Can you say amen? amen. Give them the same glory that I had with you in the beginning. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we're worshiping, you, praising, and moving in the Lord because we know that there is a life within us that we have not seen yet. Hallelujah. But we will see it. Amen. In the timing of the Lord. But until that timing, we are going to walk on and we are going to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyone got a song? Come up hither. Come up hither, everyone. It's our only hope is to come up hither. We can't stay in the earth realm. We have to come up hither where the Lord reigns supreme. getting stronger. Praise the Lord. I'm going to start preaching here in a minute. Come up hither in the sun No dragons here about for the sure word.
Bible, uh, the words uh, of, of, of life in the spirit-born songs like this, and many there are many other songs that are of the same spirit, um, uh, but uh, I, I just love it uh, when you stop singing and you start hearing the words. You realize he's here. He himself is here. In the natural eyes, I can't see him, but he's like the wind that blows and you feel it. You know, he's like the, the river uh, of many waters and you hear it. With your spiritual ears, you hear it. And you feel the host, the immensity of this. And uh, I thank God that we have that given to us by the Father to uh, experience this this day yes, and and uh, gather into it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is extraordinary. It's not common what you're feeling this morning. It's extraordinary. Hallelujah. And it's because of, of you that are joining yourselves together with us and uh, uh, those who are praying for the service, those who are uh, mentioning the Lord, oh, glory to God, he's doing all of this. Hallelujah. Let's sing Take the Veil from Off Our Face. Let all death now be erased. Bring us everlasting joy as a covering is destroyed. Take the pain from off our land. Let the Christ now take command. Wipe all tears away today. Former things are passed away. Take the veil.
Take the pain from all our land. Remembering, I watched your um, message or your uh, thing, uh, message in Paris on Tuesday nights. I didn't get to it till last night. But part of the message was where the high priest went in t- on the Day of Atonement, and he was in that veil. I think you said it was like six inches or however deep. It's a real deep veil. And he couldn't go in unless the Lord brought him in. And I was, as I mean, seconds before you were singing this song, I was thinking about, and I could see myself on all the body of Christ in that position, in the veil, waiting to be drawn in, waiting at the ready. We aren't just, oh, I hope it's going to happen. We are expecting to be, for the presence of the Lord to pull us into him and the words of this song take the veil from off of our fa- face let the death now be arrest- erased our death we yes. we will our life as we know it will be passed away because we'll enter into his life Amen. and his resurrection uh, but bring us everlasting joy as the covering is destroyed, because only he can cover, he can destroy that covering Amen. and take the pain off our land. You know, when the high priest went in, uh, he was on that day of atonement was their fate was in his hand. And I like so well, you know, that string that's on the uh, house of every tent of the people of Israel. If the Lord accepted the priest's offering, then it ran a scarlet red. And they knew that they were, um, f- you know, had another year of atonement from Amen. the Lord. Amen. And all when when we pass into that veil to oh. the presence of the Lord, oh. and we become as He is, His His uh, His presence in the earth, then all the things that we were, all those former things, will pass away. Will because we will be His new creation. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Good work. Beautiful. I have the comments before me on uh, uh, Facebook, and this is uh, <coughs> this is uh, something that I admire. One of these comments because uh, it's by Carol Lindgren uh, slash Peyton. She says, I'm praying for Phyllis and Pauletta, Ron and Mavis Pander, and Jean Pratt for healing today. And if you know what's going on in Carol, she needs a miracle in her body. And here she is, giving her strength, praying out, to those that we had mentioned in the service. Carol, I want you to know, uh, you are going to get visited by the Lord and God is going to honor you. The honor of the Lord is upon you. So just walk in his life. Just let the song of the Lord be in your heart. Wherever your spirit goes, your body will follow. Hallelujah. So be lifted up today, and we strengthen you. The whole body strengthens you today. Hallelujah. But I thank God for the body of Christ, for the witnesses around and about us, living and those that have passed. Uh, I just thank God for it. Because uh, uh, we're not alone. 
we are we are joined uh, with a holy bond of love with each other. Praise God that cannot be broken. Praise the Lord. Uh, so I thank you all for watching uh, that are watching right now with us, and I trust that you are ministering with us. Please don't be an observer. Don't be someone in the bleachers watching what's going on on the field of a, a, of a sports game or something. Come down and be a part of it. Amen. Because not only will you lift others up, you will be lifted up yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. But I thank God for you. I thank God for every one of you. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Speak that I may know thy will Pave the way that I may go to let him catch that note. The then glorify thy seed. It sounds like D. Is it? No, it sounds like E. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> songs were prayers requests of the Lord and that's our request this morning speak that I may know thy will pave the way that I may go you know unless he paves the way we can't go but that's what he's doing right now pointing out to us 
uh, the way of life, the path ahead of us. Jesus is, is pointing it out, saying this is it. This is the way. Uh, when you would go to the left or the right, no, here, stay here and let me send you forth from there. Hallelujah. So I, uh, I thank God this morning for Jesus and for his body. Hallelujah. And I guess I'm going to, uh, unless you guys have a song you want to sing. <laughs> flow together. <clears throat> Get that look from Paula every time. Well, I was going to share a little something here. Praise the Lord. Is this? I guess it's good. Okay. Um, I I was just. Uh, I'll just stand here. Am I now? Well, I could just be a voice in the wilderness. And that'd be all right. Uh, you know, I was thinking. Uh, the Lord began to quicken something in my spirit that, uh, you know, that which is first is natural than that which is spirit. And I know, and I'm just speaking for myself and Paula right now, you know, we just had a big change in our life this past weekend in the natural. But the Lord began to quicken something to me this morning as we were uh, having service. There's such an anticipation in my spirit about what God's about to do. And the scripture began to come to me over in the book of Joshua where the children of Israel had come to the end of their wanderings and they're getting ready to cross over into the promised land, Canaan's land, what I like to call the fullness, what they'd been promised, if you please, or, or the direction. And at this point in time, God had dealt with the unbelief. He had dealt with the murmurs. They had passed away in the wilderness and they're getting ready to go into the promised land. But the Lord spoke to them. And in the book of Joshua, and he said, here's what you're going to do by this time tomorrow. He said, you're going to sanctify yourself, and then you're going to begin to cross over. Now, there was a way or a method or a, uh, a design by God. He said, the Ark of the Covenant is going to go before you, and you will go behind it two cubics. And that speaks of a day. That speaks of two days. And I believe that we have been in a time of processing. I believe we've been in a time of God allowing us to have some things taken away from us and done away and dealing with us until, you know, Jesus made the statement, uh, I believe it was Herod, if I'm not mistaken. He had sent word to Jesus and wanted to know if he was the Messiah. And Jesus sent word to him. He said, you go tell that old fox that today and tomorrow or two days, today and tomorrow, I'm going to heal and do cures. But on the third day, I'm going to be perfected. And this is what I see the Lord getting ready to do. We've been in the two-day holding period, if you please, for all of the generations up until now. I believe that mankind, uh, you know, ha have, have gone through a processing. We've gone through our wanderings. We've gone through our murmurings and complainings and doubts and fears and everything under the sun. And now it's come to the end of that thing when God says we're getting ready I'm going to set you in order, in my order, in my time, my place, and you're going to cross over. And the way you cross over is you've been, you're going to follow that ark, the, the, the two cubics or the two days. We've been in that holding pattern. And one of the things that, uh, as we talked about Tuesday night, and Pauletta brought it up and reminded me, one of the things that we talked about was when the high priest went behind the veil on the day of atonement, uh, he, you know, the, the only thing, and I'll, I'll just say this in passing, the only thing, the only thing that made it all the way through that journey from the outer court 
through the holy place, into the, through the veil, into the holy of holies. There's only one thing that made the entire trip, and that was the blood. That was the blood of the lamb. That was the only thing that made it all the way through. Nothing else made it all the way through. It was picked up along the way. And the high priest would stand there on the day of atonement because the, behind the veil in the holy of holies, it stayed dark 364 days out of the year, it stayed dark. It did not light. The, the light of God did not come into that place. And this is, and, and I don't know how much to get into this, but, but watch this. The, the, the veil was what they call translucent, meaning you could barely, barely see through it. And in that, what the apostle Paul said, he said, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. So there's a change that's about to take place. Now, the high priest would stand there with that uh, 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 incense, bucket of incense and the bucket of blood. He would stand there before the veil <coughs> in front of the golden altar, which type and shadow of praise and worship. He would stand there until God received him, appeared behind the veil and put him through the veil. Now, having said that, the Bible does not say, neither does any of their customs say how long that, that priest had to stand there in front of that veil. And here's the thing. He knew, he knew he could not go back because he got tired, got weary, got frustrated, got anything. He had to stand there until the journey was complete because he wasn't going for just himself. For the Bible declares when it came time for that priest to go through that veil on the Day of Atonement, the Bible said first he offered for himself, then for all of Israel. And, he, and as he did that, he realized he wasn't going there just for his own sake, but for the whole nation of Israel. And folks, that's the burden of the Lord that's laid upon the priest of this day, the Melchizedek order, is that what we're doing is not just for us. It's not the things we're dealing with. They're going through the heartbreak, headache, rejection, all of these things, everything that's outside of us, everything that's inside of us is being dealt with, not just for us, but for a hurting creation. And we've been standing and standing and standing, and it doesn't look like anything's going to change. You know, and I've said this before, uh, you know, people have always got, uh, the Lord gave me a new revelation, a new vision, a new dream, a new this, and everybody gets excited and nothing changes. And somebody else comes along next week, a new vision, a new revelation, a new dream, nothing changes. After about 20 or 30 years of this stuff, you hear it and you go, yeah, so what? You know, who cares? Uh, I'll believe it when I see it and all these other things. You know, we may not speak it out loud, but in our spirits, our hearts are disappointed. And we stand there wondering, oh, Lord, how long can this thing, how long is it going to be? And the priest has to stand there. But we have this promise, amen, that this thing is about to break forth because God loves his creation. And we're standing here. We've endured the two days. Now we stand here getting ready for the third day dimension as God brings us through that veil for all of humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you there's an anticipation in the heavens that God's getting ready to do something for the, the apostle Paul wrote. He said, when the fullness of the time came, God did something right under everybody's noses and nobody expected it. We call it the story of Christmas, but the truth of the matter is all of creation had been, and, and here's the thing, here's the thing, even today, even today, 2,000 and something years later, after he was born of the virgin there in that little stable, 2,000 years later, the whole of creation is still waiting on this manifestation. Uh, if you go to the practicing Jews over in Israel, even now, when they celebrate Passover, what they do is they'll fix their table and then they have a blank space at the table, a blank setting. Why? Waiting on Messiah. That's what they all do in honor. This was a tradition of theirs. They waited and they're still waiting. And I'm here to tell you, all of creation is waiting. They're groaning, waiting for that manifestation. And, and, it's, and, and here's the thing. He was born right under their noses. Right there, it, it was no fanfare. It wasn't great trumpets. He wasn't born uh, in, in, a, in a king's palace. He was born right under their noses. And this is what's taking place right now. God has got a bunch of no-name nobodies. He's been preparing on the backside of their desert. And it looks like nobody cares. Nobody understands. But watch what God's about to do. And I'm talking not uh, and when this thing starts. I, I, can I put it this way? When this thing starts, everybody's going to say, Suddenly. 
Suddenly, this thing's on us. And all this time, it's been prepared for generations. He's been preparing. But you watch it happen. It'll be suddenly. Oh, my, my, my. This thing is about to break. You know, Joshua told him, he said, get ready and sanctify yourselves against this time tomorrow. He said, because this thing's about to happen. And I'm here to tell you, you know, and I shared this uh, some weeks ago, I think, how that the Lord spoke to me, uh, Bob, and he said, and I begin to see this in my, in my spiritual eye, I begin to see this. God said, you better buckle up because it's fixing to happen. And my mind began to go to that roller coaster, slowly clicking, 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 going up but when it reached the apex of that thing I mean it exploded and this is where we are we've been waiting 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 we've heard prophecies we've gone to meetings by the thousands we've heard CDs and tapes and all kinds of stuff our whole life. Some of us have been doing this a long, long time, and it doesn't look like anything, but I'm here to tell you, the days of the click, click, click is about over, and God's about to send this thing down the road, and he's doing it for creation. He's not doing it for our benefit or our ministry or our anointing or our anything. It's for a hurting creation. Right. He's done this. He's done this. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I don't know what's going to happen. I wish I did. Me and Paula say that to each other a whole lot here lately. We, we don't know what's about to happen, but we do know there is a breaking in the heavens. You know, the heavens, the heavens really are on fire. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm done. I was uh, sitting there uh, listening to that great word by Gary. <coughs> and, uh, you know, when I said, uh, I was sitting out there up here in front, and I was saying, Lord, I hope you give Gary something, a message. Because I don't feel anything right now. And I still don't as far as having a great you know, message. Uh, I, I've been, uh, I've been feeling that God. I used to know what I taught. I was, uh, uh, I knew, I used to know a whole lot of stuff. I thought, and uh, I could preach on and on with the stuff that I knew, just on the knowledge of it. I guess without feeling the unction, if I had to have a three services at a place, well, you can't uh, cancel out the second one because you don't feel a great urge of the Spirit, you know? But that's actually what it's coming down to. <laughs> you can't force the Word. You can't try to make it up, I'll put it that way, uh, just to be able to fill a time space of 20 or 25 minutes of preaching. Uh, and we're going to learn these things in the Lord as we go along. It is going to really change the way that we minister, that we uh, communicate with the body of Christ. As it is right now, folks, all we have to give to you is Jesus. Now, that's enough. Uh, that's more than what you may think when I say that uh, because uh, he's the one and uh, he's the one that gives life and he's the one that, that gives us life and immortality. Uh, and so if we give you Jesus, we're giving you uh, more than what we could ever give you ourselves by our revelation or by our knowledge. But there's nothing in us, I don't think, that, or just speaking for myself, I don't want to 
speak for Gary or anyone else, but I don't think there's anything in me that anyone would say, oh, I'm going to latch on to that because, you know, uh, personality, looks, uh, methodology of preaching, all of that attracts people. But in this day, we're not and we cannot rely on the flesh to get us to the spirit. Hallelujah. I, I, I love what was brought forth by Pauletta and Gary on the one part. And I loved everything else too. But this in particular stood out to me was that if God doesn't do it, it doesn't get done. Even though you're, you're uh, at the veil and you're ready, if God doesn't bring you through it, it isn't going to get done. And I'm like, Gary, I wonder how long that priest had to stand there. And I wonder how long you're going to have to wait upon the Lord for your answers. Uh, because uh, we want them right now. And if God doesn't move right now, then we go into a depressed situation. We feel let down. We feel like God has forgot about us. And we have to understand there's a timing to everything. Everything. There's intersections in God that something takes place at. And until you get to that intersection in God's, uh, uh, in your life, in your everyday walk with the Lord, until you come to that intersection, you're going to have to be in a mode of trusting God, believing God, and putting one foot in front of the other. Until, what's the until? Until you get to that intersection where you and God meet for an event in you. Hallelujah. And God has that event appointed unto you. Many events are appointed and have been appointed that you've already come across. And, and so I keep reminding myself in my situation that I can't get discouraged uh, about my hand that's still giving me so much trouble. Even though the Lord touched it during the services, uh, it hasn't gotten any better than that. But I'm not discouraged over it. I'm trying to keep myself in the sense that God has already shown me and given me a sign that I can heal that if I want to. Uh, J. Preston Eby told me that. Uh, and, and other folks at a meeting, uh, he was in a meeting that I had at Elwyn Roach's. I was at a house meeting, and uh, Preston and his wife Lorraine came up from El Paso to be in the meeting. And he was standing, uh, sitting in a chair about 20 feet from me, and the Lord had just told me that I had healing in my hands. And that through his instruction, whoever I laid my hands on would be healed. And I was like, whoa, wow, Lord, help me to be able to trust you for that. And uh, in that meeting, I looked at Preston, and he wasn't as bad as he got in the end there where his head was on his neck, uh, but it was stiff, and he couldn't. He had to turn his whole body to, to see anyone. And uh, the Lord said, go lay hands on him. I'm going to heal him. And so I took a deep breath and obeyed the Lord, and I went over and I said, Preston, I've got to lay hands on you and believe that God's going to heal you. And so I, I laid hands on him, and it wasn't a loud, boisterous thing at all. I just said a simple prayer over him. But I could feel the Spirit moving through me. And uh, so anyway, uh, 
the meeting was over, and we went and uh, ate and everything, and then they left for El Paso. And so I thought, well, I wonder, Lord, I wonder. I didn't, I didn't see his head doing any different. He was still doing this. But then uh, he was in a, a, a meeting after that, and I saw the video on it. And Preston said, you know, Bob Tarangel prayed for me uh, at Elwin Roach's meeting. And he said, I didn't feel anything different in my body. He said, until the next morning when I was in the shower. And I know how this is. Gary knows how this is, I'm sure. When you have a bad back, to wash your feet, you've got to take hold of that leg and hold it up while you're doing it because that leg ain't going to come up by itself. And Preston had been that way for a few years. He was used to it. And so when he was done with his shower, he got out of the shower, started drying himself off, and he said, hey, my leg just came right up. I didn't have to hold it. He said, I'm healed of that. And uh, so he went before the Lord and he said, Lord, I thank you for healing that part of my hip and my back. But he said, how come you didn't do the whole thing? How come you didn't heal all of my neck and everything else that, uh, that needs healing? And uh, the Lord spoke to him and said, I just wanted to let you know I could do this if I wanted to. I could heal everything. But you know, God's not a sugar daddy. He's not something that you reach into and take out something from them and say, I need this. Uh, So don't let the afflictions keep us from doing God things. We have to rise above it, which is the very purpose many times of an affliction, is so that you have to ascend and get out from the grips of that affliction and minister to others. As I've already said, it's not us that we're ministering to personally, it's others. (coughs) And when we minister to others, the Spirit ministers to us. Amen. So that's the key to it. The reason for these afflictions is to glorify God. That... uh, even in the midst of these uh, ailments, we're raising our hands to the Lord and we've got joy and we've got peace and uh, we're not letting those things keep us in a, a depressed state, amen. And so this morning, that's my word <clears throat> that the Lord gave me while I was just before I got up is that, Uh, There's a time for everything and not to be discouraged uh, if we're in the until part of our walk Uh, because I don't care. Uh, I'm going to praise the Lord if this hand ever operates uh, right or not or any other thing going on in me. Uh, We have a voice. Amen. Amen. And if I didn't have a voice, I'd sign language it. <laughs> Amen. I'd find a way to praise the Lord and to speak of his goodness. Some way or another, I would find a way to express his life. Hallelujah. And, and I pray that you will also. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I know what, what it's like to be... Uh, in a lot of pain. I know what it's like to uh, lay in bed uh, for months 
when my neck problem first began, I was in bed for months, not able to get out of bed, and I'm, I had to move my head incrementally through the night and the day to find a place where that excruciating pain would stop for just a, a, a few minutes. And then it would come on me again and I'd have to find another place to move my neck. For three months I did that. And uh, uh, then, then uh, through, through shots in my neck uh, that wasn't supposed to help anything really uh, because mine was pressing right into my cord, into my spinal cord, and uh, steroid is the only thing that could help it to get the swelling down from it. And that's what it did. It got the swelling down. So I was out of pain for uh, quite a while after that. And God touched me. I really believe that God touched me with a miracle there. But then I found out that uh, I had to have more surgery. I'd have surgery uh, to uh, fuse my uh, vertebrae. And that's what Preston had, Preston Eby. So I really had to take it before the Lord. I said, now, Lord, Preston ended up with his head on his shoulder, laid over. And I got to know that this is what you want me to do. Uh, because I wasn't in pain. But the MRI showed that it was, my spinal cord was so severely cut off that I could become paralyzed for life or killed if I fell. So I, I knew all that had to be done. But I know I've been there. I understand completely. Linda and Chris Lingana, I want you to know, I know where you're at. Amen. But I'm not going to feel sorry for you because I know what the end is. The end is you rejoicing in the Lord and seeing his hand moving for you. Seeing his hand taking you out of your present situation and getting you into a situation that is going to be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. So until that happens, Chris and Linda, don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Trust the Lord. Amen. Tomorrow, things can change. Oh, hallelujah. Who knows? But we're standing in front of the veil waiting for the Lord to move. And I don't know, Gary, I can imagine the priests singing songs of worship unto the Lord while he was standing there. Hallelujah. I could, I could picture him in a state of readiness and, and, and exalting the Lord until his, his transfusion into that, into that inner sanctum. And uh, I, I don't believe he was sitting there twiddling his thumbs and just, you know, shifting his weight from one leg to another, waiting for it to happen. I believe he, he, was, he was being made ready for that. Hallelujah. Because if he wasn't in a right heart or a right mind, then he could be killed inside there. So it was a life or death situation for him. Hallelujah. And, uh, uh, and, and this, is, this is something that I'm going to carry with me this week is that I realize that we've got to be able to minister to the body, encourage them, build them up. Hallelujah. Uh, God doesn't want us hitting up upside the head with the Bible. Uh, God wants us to uh, give them a lifting hand into the presence of the Lord. I don't know. I'm just hoping that you love the Lord enough to be able to feel it, what's in this room where you're at. A love and blessings and peace and joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, so we carry each other, don't we, through the day. Praise God. 
and uh, you're not heavy. You're my brother. You're my sister. You're not heavy. And so uh, may the Lord cause each and every one to be able to participate in the healing of the Lord. Hallelujah. And sometimes there's nothing else that we can do or say except uh, God be with you because we are. We're with you. And we're going to see you through this with prayer, spoken words of expression, of spirit life. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, a word that comes out behind the veil and visits you in the midst of your trial and your tribulations. Hallelujah. And raises you up in the Lord, strengthens you, and makes you strong and mighty. Hallelujah, to do great things in God. Amen. I believe that word is able to do that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anyone else have a word this morning? Gary, give Paula a word, I mean, a, a face. Do, do a face toward her. Oh, yeah. The Lord is with you, brother. I saw you. I saw that. Well, well, when Gary was preaching and ministering, I was just thinking. I've been thinking about the song we sang, "He Will Arise," and and uh, about us paying the price, not for us. Oh Lord, it's not for us. And I thought, you know, I don't mind paying the price for my husband, my kids, my grandkids, y'all. The people that I love and love me but you know we got to pay the price for all <laughs> for all and so I guess that's what I'm going to have to work on myself so anyway I just wanted to confirm it's not for us it's not just for us not just for us it will be for us but it's not just for us it's it's for creation yes. that's it preach, preach. Yeah, yeah. anyone else Hallelujah. Thank you, Paula, for obeying the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we're asking you to be with us this week, Lord. Oh, I did want to uh, ask everyone's prayers for uh, Gary and Paula and myself. Uh, they're, they have graciously offered to uh, uh, take me up to Michigan to see Bobby Jean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be, we'll, we'll be leaving tomorrow, Monday, and we'll be uh, having Thanksgiving uh, there in Detroit or uh, uh, Woodhaven. And, uh, and then I imagine we'll be coming back Friday, I imagine. And uh, uh, so everybody be praying for us. And uh, Bobby Jean, uh, needless to say, is very, very happy. And I'm very, very happy that we're going to be together again. So uh, thank the Lord for that. Father, we do want to thank you for all the blessings, for the way that you make uh, uh, things just happen, the way that you uh, protected Jane, the way that you're, uh, uh, you've uh, always moved for, uh, for each and every one of us to let us know that you are our protector. You are uh, the overseer of our well-being. Hallelujah. So we thank you for it, and we're asking you, Lord, to go before us and bless each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We love you. If you want to write to us, Spiel Box 0519, Dixon, Tennessee, 37056. Now, Tuesday night, uh, Gary's going to be up in Michigan. Uh, so uh, won't be able to unless uh, you can do it up there. We'll see. But we'll let you know. But right, for right now, um, oh, that's right. We won't. Yeah, we've got a an, a, an event that we're going to have to go to. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, he won't be able to uh, minister Tuesday morning, uh, Tuesday night. But we will be here for Sunday morning. At least I will. And uh, pray for Zach. He's been up in uh, 
seeing Sarah up at West Virginia, I believe is where they they live at with Sarah's uh, folks, and I'll be picking him up from the airport tonight. Praise God! So I'm glad that he's coming back in uh, to be uh, with his dogs. He loves his dogs. All right, we love you. Have a great week. God